Hi, my name is Dr. Tracy George, and I'm a professor of pathology at the University of Utah and president and chief medical officer at ARUP Laboratories in Salt Lake City. Welcome to the program titled, Is It Systemic Mastocytosis? Best Practices for Diagnosis and Management. In this segment, we'll delve into the pathophysiology and clinical elements of systemic mastocytosis, highlighting the effects of driver mutations on mast cell activation and implications for targeted treatments. Mast cell activation syndromes can be broadly divided into three types, primary, secondary, and idiopathic. Systemic mastocytosis, or SM, which is a primary disorder of mast cells along with cutaneous mastocytosis and monoclonal mast cell activation syndrome, affects approximately one person per 10,000 to 20,000 in the population. According to the World Health Organization, there are five main types of SM. The advanced subtypes, aggressive SM, SM with an associated hematologic neoplasm, and mast cell leukemia, and the non-advanced subtypes, indolent SM and smoldering SM. About 80% of cases of SM are thought to be of the indolent subtype, although robust epidemiological data on subtypes is lacking. Mast cells are found in mucosal and epithelial tissues throughout the body, but are most numerous at the interfaces between the internal and external environments, such as the skin and mucosal tissues of the respiratory and intestinal tracts. Mast cells respond rapidly to foreign organisms, antigens, and toxins through the release of various mediators, such as histamine and tryptase, which occurs within minutes as well as cytokines and chemokines that recruit other inflammatory cells, which occurs over several hours. Stem cell factor, SCF, is critical for mast cell growth, differentiation, and survival. The transmembrane receptor for SCF is KIT, encoded by the proto-oncogene KIT. Over 95% of adult SM cases are caused by somatic mutations in the KIT gene, with the most common mutation being a substitution of aspartic acid for valine in the second catalytic domain of the KIT transmembrane tyrosine kinase receptor, known as D816V. This leads to constitutive kinase activity, which results in increased activation, prolonged survival, and independent proliferation of mast cells, leading to abnormal activity activation or infiltration of mast cells that interfere with normal function. While the D816V mutation is the most well characterized, other associated somatic mutations described in patients with SM include those in epigenetic regulator genes such as ASXL1, RUNX1, and DNMT3A. Upon activation, mast cells release preformed and newly synthesized mediators in a phasic fashion. Aberrant mast cell activities are therefore responsible for the wide range of episodic symptoms associated with SM, including flushing, pruritus, urticaria, gastrointestinal symptoms, including dyspepsia, cramping, and diarrhea, recurrent anaphylaxis, persistent bone pain, and fatigue. The majority of patients with non-advanced SM have maculopapular cutaneous mastocytosis, also known as urticaria pigmentosa. The symptomatology of SM varies depending on the affected organ and, in addition to the allergic and hypotensive reactions, can include enlarged liver, spleen, and or lymph nodes. Symptoms of SM can be triggered by reactions to insect stings and bites, medications, emotional stress, surgical procedures, and viral illnesses. Traditionally, treatment of SM focused solely on symptom management. However, over the last several years, research into new therapeutic targets have yielded exciting findings. For example, the inhibition of tyrosine kinases in patients with SM have produced positive clinical trials results. In fact, the multi-kinase inhibitor midostorin and the selective inhibitor of D816B mutant kit avapritinib have recently been FDA approved for the treatment of advanced SM. A number of tyrosine kinase inhibitors are in various stages of clinical development for the treatment of non-advanced SM as well. Some examples include avapritinib, blue-263, and misatinib, which are kit-selective tyrosine kinase inhibitors, and cerulimab, which is an IL-6 inhibitor. 
Results from late-stage clinical trials are expected in the coming years for these and other potential therapies. Clinicians and patients are hopeful that positive results from these clinical studies will usher in a new era of effective therapies for patients with non-advanced SM. And with that, I want to thank you for your time today, and I hope you enjoy the remainder of the program.